All right, everybody, I'm going to try this today, a different angle. I'm not getting a lot of light on my face, but I uh, just want to give it a try. Um, I got to look bad, man. I need to shave. Anyway, let's talk about what's going on. I put together some nice visuals, some nice graphics on the, uh, I've been talking about the drop in net government transfers, a.k.a. the deficit. I put together some visuals, some graphics on that, and I sent it out to subscribers. If you're not a subscriber and you want to see those charts, just uh, go to my website, pitbulleconomics.com. Sign up for a 30-day free trial for MMT Trader. I think when you see it visually, you really get an idea of what's going on in terms of uh, the fall in these transfers, at least year on a year-over-year -year basis. And what's interesting is uh, right now, you know, we're down like 250 billion year over year, and that works out to like 20 billion a month reduction in net transfers. Somebody asked me like, Mike, can you explain what are net transfers? Well, you have, you have the leading flows, which that's what government spends. It goes into the economy then simultaneously it's taxing out a certain amount. And what's left over, those are the net government transfers. You know, I've used the swimming pool analogy. Let's say you have a hose filling the pool up with water, but at the same time you have a drain. Um, and right now the water coming out of the hose is faster than uh, the rate of drain However, compared to last year, all right, the rate of drain was much slower. So that water coming out of the hose was filling up the pool more than it's filling up the pool at this time of year. Or you could say that the pool level has gone down, okay, 250 billion. So that's the difference between leading flows. And, and by the way, those are my terms, leading flows and net government transfers. I went to the term net government transfers, I told you guys, because I don't like using the term deficit. It's stupid. It has a negative connotation, number one. Number two, it, it only describes, again, in a negative way, one side of the, of the balance sheet. Okay, the deficit for whom? For the government? I mean, so what? They're issuing their own currency, which they have no inability to do. Okay, and it's not um, explaining the other side of the balance sheet, which is the, the, the surplus or the addition that goes to the non-government, that's us, that goes to the economy. So like if they're going to talk about government deficits, they got to talk about non-governmental surpluses too. Because again, it's, it's just accounting. It's, it's double entry accounting. For every debit, there's a credit. For every asset, there's a liability. Uh, for every debtor, there's a creditor. I mean, so it, it's fascinating to me that you have all these highly educated people. I am not an accountant. I never even studied accounting. But I understand that if somebody owes money, that the counterparty to that is a person who's receiving that money. So that's an asset to them. I mean, that's how banks run, that's how everything runs. So, I mean, I don't use the term deficit. It's an, I don't, remember, I, I think that language is very important. It, it kind of, you know, it programs your brain. It makes your brain see things in a certain way. And if there's a negative connotation surrounding the word deficit, I don't think that's very useful. And, you know, in addition, it's pounded into our heads day in and day out in the media where they don't know what they're talking about. And again, they leave out the whole other side of the equation which is the, uh, the surplus side, which goes to us, the non-government globally, anyway. So I think when you see these charts, it really stands out. And again, I wanna point out that that 20 billion a month in the slowdown in net transfers, that almost cancels out the interest income transfers from the discount on treasury bills. Okay, remember, treasury bills are not sold with a coupon. They're not sold with an interest rate attached. They're sold at a discount to face value. And basically, when they mature, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, one year, 
uh, they mature at full face value, and that's your interest rate. Okay, so they're they're treated or they uh, they work a little bit differently than bonds and notes that have a coupon an interest rate attached. Okay, but anyway, uh, T bill discount has been running like twenty five billion a month. But now we're dropping at 20 billion a month in these net government transfers. So, I mean, it almost wipes out the whole thing, not, not the whole interest income transfers because you still have treasury securities that are getting interest. But still, it's, it, you know, that 250 billion I've, I've said in the past, maybe it's not such a big deal when we're talking about a 1.4 trillion deficit. But when you put it in those terms, when it, when it almost completely cancels out an important source of these interest income transfers, then it's like, wow, man, it's like, I didn't even realize it until I, I looked at the numbers and I'm like, that's big, man, that's big. So anyway, let's equate this to the market and, and price action in the market, all right? Now, I don't, like to, I don't like to forecast or speculate on one or two days or a couple of days, but I'm starting to see a little bit of a pattern here now with the market. You know, and it, this goes right to what I said was going to happen. As these net government transfers continue to drop and the economy slows down, the market's going to have much more volatility in terms of, you know, it's, it's not going to shoot straight up like it did during the COVID stimulus. And when the, the Fed first started adding, uh, raising interest rates and, and those interest rate transfers really started to ramp up, OK. And also now we're running into this, uh, what I called in the past, uh, the inverse, the reverse automatic stabilizers, right? Where when the economy grows, it throws off more tax revenue to the federal government because, you know, wages go up, profits go up. And then if the spending is, is stagnant, is steady, but the tax revenues are going up, that's what's shrinking those net government transfers, all right? So you got all this dynamic at play, but I said with the market, it's gonna, not, what I'm noticing is like, you know, we come in maybe weak or we come in flat, then it goes down, then it bounces up and it looks like it's gonna start running and then it comes back down again. And then you close with fractional gains. To me, this makes a lot of sense because it's kind of like the market is reflecting the slowdown in the economy. And I've said this many times that I've said the market will follow what's happening with the economy, not the other way around. A lot of people, I think a majority of people think, oh, the market leads the economy. That's not how it works. The market reflects corporate profits, uh, incomes, mainly corporate profits and corporate profits go up when the economy is growing. So let me summarize. I, again, I don't think we're headed to a recession. Leading flows are still very strong. It's just that these net flows are shrinking. And over time, the more that shrinks, the closer we get to zero growth. And that's why I think, um, like, I haven't looked recently, but, um, whatchamacallit, the Atlanta Fed's GDP now. You know, they, they revised it down five times. I spoke about this the other day and it got down to like 1.5, 1.6% for the second quarter, which I said, that's what we're gonna see. But then all of a sudden they jumped it up to 3% again. I, I think 3% is way off the mark. I think they're gonna have to bring it down again. And it's gonna be, if we're lucky, I think it'll be 2%. I think 2% right now is the upper end of economic uh, growth rate, the economic growth rate, which is not terrible. It's just not three and a half, four, five, six percent like we've been used to over the last few years. And actually, like I've been saying, if, if you're a stock market investor, if you're a trader, whatever, it's better because it's not going straight up like what has been the case. And I always told you guys, don't chase a market that's going straight up. And this kind of a condition right now is gonna give you more opportunity 
to buy in. Like I've been selectively buying uh, certain uh, stocks as they come down. I mean, there's stuff happening right now that you could take advantage of, okay? Like I, I like the banks a lot. I've been saying it. I like the banks a lot. I still like energy. I like the home builders. Um, some of those, you know, the, 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 the frenzy stocks, it's for lack of a better term, that's been the NVIDIA and the AI. Like I steer away from that unless they come down. I'm looking, I'm searching. It's like going to the flea market, right? You got stuff that eh, you don't really want it. It's maybe not, but you're looking for that deal. You're looking for that bargain. You're looking for that that gem that you know nobody's paying attention to and it's priced below the value of what you know. It's there. I mean, and it's not like you have to discover some new company. Like I stay with the big name companies. I stay with, like I've always said, the leaders in their industry, whether that's in finance, banking, energy, consumer goods, technology. I stay with the big names that have a history of profitability. I have a whole uh, video course on this, MMT and value stock selection, which is also on my website, pitbulleconomics.com. So there's stuff to do out there. But again, I always emphasize patience. I emphasize not chasing after anything. I do not think we're going in a negative growth scenario. I mean, not right now. I mean, if that year over year drop goes from 250 billion to 500 billion, which I don't think is gonna happen, but it has been getting bigger. And again, you should check out these visuals because they give you a very nice picture of what's been going on. And you know what they say, a picture's worth a thousand words. And that's exactly true in this case. Anyway, folks, um, as always, if you, if you uh, choose to, please click like and subscribe. It really helps my channel a lot. A lot of you have been doing it. I appreciate it very much. Thank you very much. Uh, the growth in subscribers is picking up and that's great. And also, if you want to get those charts, go to my website, pitbulleconomics.com and sign up for a 30 day free trial of MMT trading. I don't know how this looks with the lighting. It doesn't look so good to me right now. I don't look so good to me right now. So, I mean, maybe tomorrow I'm going to switch locations or something like that. Anyway, have a good one. Talk to you tomorrow, folks. Bye.